Love Line, Coast to Coast. Yes, it is. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And tonight, we're happy to have our good friend Rob Schneider on the show. Thank you, Adam. It's great to be here. Cheers. Good to have you back, uh, Rob. Pleasure is all mine. The, uh, Dr. Drew, good to see you. The Rob. Animal is the name of the film. It is opening tomorrow, Friday, June 1st, right? Thank you. Yes. I'm I have excited uh, about that. I have seen. Uh, multi 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 commercials for this movie and i've uh, i actually did a uh, man show bit where i was touring around on a double double decker bus today <laughs> all through town and saw several thousand <laughs> the animal uh, movie posters. So this is uh, what well, you call spending a big money. release. Yeah, they're spending the money. That's nice, you know. Usually, uh, most movies I've done, they haven't spent the money, so it's nice. But this, they, they must like it. They like it. So and it's a nice movie. It's PG-13. Colleen's you know. in it. Colleen is hot and in the movie... Yeah, you know, and you know what? She's the kind of hot though doesn't piss off women. You know, right? The thing like like Cindy Crawford, like it angers women actually. Yeah, they don't like her. But Colleen, she just sneaks right in there. She's what I call a sleeper hot, <laughs> and I and I oh, I always think that part of the appeal to sleeper hot is that guys think they actually got a shot with her. Yeah. Because she seems like a civilian. You know, you're right. There's just on the edge of, of believability and possibility. Well, and she works think, that. She yeah, works. Right. She talks to people, you know, who she has no interest in. I just guessing, but she still talks to them. But She's also, the, she she seemed to be at her most desirable when she was sort of half dead from starvation. When guys really <laughs> felt like if she wouldn't move so fast, they really really right. would have a chance. Rape was it. a real possibility. Yeah, right. She's the hottest chick with with uh, sores on her legs you've ever seen. <laughs> Top five at least. It, I, I'm a rapist. Oh, Drew, please. The mics are still hot. Uh, this movie, uh, as I said, is uh, opening uh, this Friday. This, I, I guess your your last film was Deuce Bigelow, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, have year, you been in, been in others since then? No, no, I haven't really. You haven't? No, no. I, no. Well, didn't like uh, little Nicky come yeah, out little, after Deuce? Yeah, I had a little part in that, but I wasn't, you know, I was just there. I literally showed up to visit, and the next thing I know, I'm in it. You know, but uh, that was, uh, you know, I'm, are you in another just, space showed up. thing coming up? No, no, I just, it was basically, it was Bigelow, I showed up, Adam Sandler, uh, I brought the hat with me just in case he wanted to ask me, and thank God he did, so I'm proud to be in that, uh, and then um, The Animal, and then that's... In, in, w do you give uh, credit for the animal uh for for from deuce bigelow i mean was deuce bigelow like a little bit of a surprise maybe not to you but to a, a lot of industry I guess people it was. you know what's funny is that like i get the i get these wonderful backhand compliments like you know <laughs> yeah. hey it was a surprise hit like what are you we were all expecting it to bomb or something you know but the, it's funny though i'm finding a, a kind of reverse backlash now I find the critics are like they don't, they got, they know they got nailed. They were behind the curve on Deuce Bigelow because it was like he made eighty million dollars in the video. Everyone in the country loved it, you know. And uh, so they're they're being kind to the animal, which is I'm shocked by. And I say it's too late to start kissing up to me now. Right. You had your chance to suck up to me, but no, it was <laughs> nice surprise. But honestly, I love I I really love that movie, and it was nice that that people liked it. And I, I thought at the time, you know, if you're psyched about something, you think it's funny. Chances are other people will. Right. So, but it did catch on, and it was nice, and I guess it had a good heart to it, you know. Is is the animal Disney film? No, or no, no. It's, or, or Revolution Sony. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just looking at the billboard or something. It's got a uh, Jungle Book vibe or something. Yeah. Don't tell them. All right, I let's won't. keep that here. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a fun movie, and it's nice that they're behind it, and it's nice that we can back it up. They're not just pushing a movie that's that stinks. You know, I'm really proud of it. It took a year and a half. And by the way, I was offered a lot of crap in the meantime. I sat, went broke, me and my brother and Tom Brady, and uh, you know, writing this movie and. Um, you know, I got to give myself credit for that. I right. got offered a bunch of crap in between time, but and we wanted to write our own. Tell me, I was just uh, looking at your bio here in uh, your co co-owner in a restaurant. No, not anymore. No, oh, no. that's gone. Burned to the ground. Suspicious fire. Oh, seriously? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I only own like five percent of the damn thing. Basically, I owned enough where I can go in and eat free. Uh, right. In and then we had a club, and we got sued so many times. Where are you from stuff. originally? San Francisco. So that's why you were at, your restaurant was up there, and you had a girlfriend yeah. last time you were in here. Yes. That's still okay. Um, I don't know. You know what? You, I guess you got to spend time with him. 
You know, they need that. <laughs> yeah. They need that attention. And, and without like that, animals, yeah. yeah. Without that, uh, yeah, I've been spending more time with goats and chimpanzees and orangutans with my own girlfriend, so it's, a put, it's putting a strain. Do you live in San Francisco? I got a little place up there, but I'm down here. You know, I have to admit, I'm acclimated to L.A. now. Even though I like to say I'm from San Francisco, I hate L.A., but I love L.A. now, I have to admit. Yeah, I'm, every, I'm giving over to it. Everyone in San Francisco hates people from L.A., yeah. and, and probably rightfully. For good reasons. Oh, so. yeah. Better yeah. looking girls down here. The weather's better. If you, All you have to do is go to La Brea Tarpets and realize it's the best weather on the planet for like the last 65 million years, you know. <laughs> Any mammal who could get to L.A. and Hollywood was doing it, you know. I was at the La Brea Tar Pits today, by the way, on the <laughs> bus, Decker yeah. bus, and uh, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. You know you're running short as far as the town goes on national monuments. And cultural, has, cultural activity. Cultural yeah. activity yeah. when the big dr- selling point is a hole filled with tar. Yeah, that's... Uh, Everyone goes, hey, it's... It, a- any other town would have would have cemented over that thing a hundred years ago. It's it that is- or pinks. Yeah. Hot dog stand. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. It is it is a, is a huge hole yeah. filled with tar. With a bunch of bones. And we turn it into a museum. I yeah. You don't even really see any bones around it. Mm. They have uh, some plaster, like brontosauruses, that they stick in it, but that's yeah. about it. Well, the bones are mostly agents, too. Well, no, the, yeah, it's true. But the but the bone the bone highlight is the wall of wolves' heads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 4,000 wolf heads. Because the animals so get stuck there and the wolves start yeah. attacking them. and Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just stating that 4,000 wolves have been found, there'll be enough, okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, Drew. You're getting cynical, too, buddy. Lamar? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I had a question about training the PC muscles. Your what muscles? PC, PC. muscle. Politically PC. correct? Huh? Pubococcygeus muscle. Yes. Yeah, okay. Like Kegel exercise. The one that controls how you pee. Right. Uh, yeah, That's ejaculation. Well, mm-hmm. it doesn't control no, ejaculation. It does, yeah. It's sort of, it's, it's contracting during ejaculation. But does it, uh, k- k- is there any point in improving the strength of that? Some people say that if they do Kegel exercises, though I've read some stuff recently on Kegels that show that they really don't hold up to any sort of scrutiny in terms of affecting much of anything. But oh, some really? people occasionally will claim that the male will get some control over orgasm or get more intensity in orgasm. What are you looking for, Lamar? Uh, I'm trying to lengthen them. Lengthen the orgasm? Uh, yeah, my, t- my time. No, 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 no. You know, if you're interested in this seriously, there's a thing, there's a book called uh, oh, The time. Multiple Orgasmic Man. And uh, it's about, a, you can have this, uh, it's an orgasm without actually orgasming. Stop, Rob. We had that guy up here. That was the guy we had up here. Oh, we did? Yeah. No, no, no. It's actually, you know. I know. I've it, done that. It, it works. It does? Yes, absolutely. You know, Drew, you're, you're skeptic because you're a medical doctor and close-minded about, you know, the dictatorship of the American Medical Association. But, however, there are other ways. And uh, Shaquille O'Neal's doctor, by the way, I'm making a segue. <laughs> Fixed my back after like I got a 16 year old injury in my back. Nice. This Chinese guy literally just took this goo out of my back, and my, I feel like a 19 year old. Seriously, just you know, like a cupping and scraping. Doctor Shen. Su, really? Sue, Doctor Shen. Sue. Yeah, seriously. Fixed me, and I've sent 35 people there, Did go- and they've all been fixed. Was the goo in it's your like back, or was it dead, on your back? It's like static blood, and if you look at it under like uh, you know um, infrared. We use a needle. What did he do? Draw yeah, it? no, it's like a you know little tiny uh, what do you like call acupuncture. acupuncture. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And it does the cupping. Oh sure. I'm telling you, it works. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I mean, and this you know as far as I forget who wrote that book, but uh, you know I didn't read the whole thing, of course, because I'm an actor. You know. Well, the guy, the guy who wrote the book, we had him up here, and he basically just uh, decided that he would. Uh, lengthen the duration of orgasm by sort of redefining orgasm. I mean, yeah, uh, okay. orgas- orgasm is the spinal reflex that occurs when there's stuff coming out of your penis and there's a contraction going on and it's an absolute climax. But without the ejaculation, you can still have pretty much a, an you orgasm can ha- without that. You can have long periods of high degree of arousal. Yes. yes. Well, I, you know, there's the gray area there. That's right. You're in the gray area. I'm, I'm into that the, maybe the metaphysical is a little bit, I'm stretching a touch. All right, but you prolonged your orgasm? No, actually, it's all, it's like an uh, an inter- orgasm. orgasm without pre orgasm. Well, okay, again, you know, but you got it. You have to try it. You go home, try it a little but, bit, mix it up. You get the book. It's a multi orgasmic man, and it uh, you have to practice at it. But you know that feeling when you're let's just say you're whacking off, yeah, and there's that feeling about uh, cl- you're close to the climax, and you're not even sure if something came out yet. Right. You okay. know what? Yeah. Now, if you could take, but sometimes nothing comes out. You, but you're not sure because it kind of feels like it did. But, but if you actually <laughs> get to that point, if you could stretch that out, that point, then, then you're going to become refractory again. If you actually achieve right there, you're going to get refractoriness. And you're not okay. going to have anything. So. No, 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 no. But if you reach underneath with the three fingers and squeeze underneath. Oh, you, you do all that, that stuff? stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's wow. the pulling up of the thing, you know. I don't say you do it all the time, but, you know, mix it up. 
<laughs> your, your chi is building up to... It's the chi, yes, yes exactly. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now that's what I'm talking about. He is an animal. 5,000 years old, they've been doing this. You know what I like about all the, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, sexual practices? It's only about men. There's absolutely nothing in it about women, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. It's like, yeah. Now people are going to think I did that. We're going to grind up this rhino horn. We're going to eat this bear pancreas. I didn't say all this stuff was good. That's Korea, by the way. That, a lot of that stuff is, is Korean. Maybe Chinese, too. Okay, I admit that. But as far as the woman's part, it's like, hey, hold still. <laughs> I mean, the, that's that's about it, right? Well, foot binding, I, I, I'm not for. No. I've gone on record about that. No, not both of them. Josh? Yes. You're 31. What's up? Yeah, the first thing I want to say is Rob's characters were great on Saturday Night Live. Oh, thank you. the copy guy. Oh, thank you very much. Adam, you're one of the funniest guys on the planet. Absolutely. Oh, um, Comedy genius. What's up, Josh? <laughs> here's, Absolutely. Here's the funny thing. My stepbrother, he graduated from San Diego State University, and he has a problem whenever you make fun of that school. Um, but the funny thing is he loves when you make fun of guys that work around metal or guys that go to junior college. Yet you're talking about his school. And his job. Like that. And his work. Yeah, and the funny thing is he went to look up who graduated from the school, so we have this impressive list for you. And all he found out was Art Linkletter in the 30s and uh, the guy who played Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies, Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. Right. Yeah. Those are the two graduates from San Diego State. Worth, yeah, those are the two big guys. I know. It's a junior college. And, 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 and when Art Linkletter college. graduated, it was an Tony, ag agricultural school. Tony right. Gwynn. But, yeah, well, Tony Gwynn, too, but that's more of an athletic thing. But he's talking from a scholastic standpoint. Yeah. And, listen, I don't blame him. That school is dangerous. I'll have you know Tony Gwynn graduated in communications. <laughs> so, <laughs> come on, that's a genius. He's a very smart guy. The school's too close to Tijuana to try to get <laughs> any learning done. Yeah. Hey, Drew, here's my question. Yeah. We were watching this video. Um, I'm not going to tell you why we were watching it um, for scientific reasons. Oh, and there was these, it was a porno. These guys had two penises and... Um, some of the people in the room thought they were fake, and some thought they were real. And I've heard you talk before about guys that have an extra nipple. And, uh, you know, it, it, could this be real? Have you seen it? Have no, never it? seen it, never heard of it. You've never heard of that? No. Impossible. But do tell us the name of the video. <laughs> well, it's amazing. No, I'm just telling that. Anymore. Adam has a, a very evolved uh, sort of observational theory about this. What, what's that? With the well, belt. I wish I knew, too. The guys oh. always wear a yeah, did did the guy wear any kind of truss or harness or anything no, like he that? Didn't have anything like that? But my friend claims the pubic hair looked totally fake. Well, look, I don't know how. Uh, he did. Okay, here's I think uh, here's, that's the tip off right there. Here's how you can tell: was the guy tan? Was he muscular? Yeah, uh, there, well, there were a couple different guys in the video because again, the video specialized in people that had weird things in that area. All right, but no, that's did, not possible. Did, did, Doesn't he, exist. did any of the guys have a, you know, washboard abs or shaved chest with a tan or any of that stuff? No, they were just, uh, you know, one had, I think, a belly kind of out of shape. Mm, did they try to save their orgasmic chi? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's Only on one thing. side. My friend was saying, since they weren't showing him when he was flaccid, they were just showing when they were hard. All right, I can't. We gotta stop with this. <laughs> all right, all right. You know what? I don't know. What's in the name of science? Never Gross. No, never heard of it. Never heard Gone. Okay, but l let me say this. There is a... Did he graduate is, from San Diego State? Not yet. There is a, a sect of the porn industry that deals with prosthetics. Uh. And they have guys who have penises that have endless amounts of uh, so-called semen coming out of them. They have women with you know enormous novelty-sized breasts. There are certain movies that try to pass off people with different prosthetics that uh. as real. Uh. And you can usually sort of mm. see through them, but sometimes uh, they do a decent job of it. Mm. But when they have like a studded harness that seems to be for a yeah. bra or for a jock strap, that means well, that's what's holding it on. Well, the one that he saw was definitely a high production freaky porn. Right. You know. And, uh, could be real. Jen? Yeah. Vivid, I think they call it. You're 20. What's up? Uh, hi. How you guys doing? Good. Good. What's up? Uh, um, well, I'm about eight months pregnant now, and, uh, been in the state for about a year or so and you've been pregnant for a year or so what no no the state been, of texas oh state of texas oh sorry i've been here in the state for a year and uh i met this guy and we hit it off pretty good and, and then uh i got pregnant and they don't have condoms in texas or what or birth no. control no we we used um it was some sort of gel and you yeah that doesn't work hair yeah. gel no yeah, that's i'm not telling good. you that the gel and the jellies and the foams those are to be used with a diaphragm and or a condom 
Yeah. Okay. Well, well let's we're beyond not live in the past. Point. Yeah. yeah. We're well, I don't want other people to make the same mistakes. So. Yeah. yeah. So what's going on now? Um. Well, I'm a white man's pregnant, and me and he's bipolar, and he takes medicine, and he takes medication for it, and uh, we've been having you know a lot of problems because he. You know, two weeks on, he'll say that we're we're just friends, and then a few weeks later, we'll get intimate, and he'll act like, you know, he loves me, and... Well, what do you mean, acts like, just because he's sleeping with you? You think that... No, no, I mean, he, like, uh, hugs with hugs me, and says all these nice things, and does all these nice things for me, and... Yeah. Well, okay, so how long have you known him? For about a year. Okay, and he got you pregnant a couple months after you met him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think 20-year-old males, you've got to listen to what they say, not what they do. I mean, even 20-year-old males. I mean, but yeah. in their, males in their 20s. Wait a minute. Didn't you transpose that? You mm-hmm. said listen to what they say, listen. not what they do? No, in this case, listen to what they say, which is, I, I, I want to be like friends. Yeah. He treats me nice. He sleeps with me. Well, okay, he's being a nice guy so he can sleep with you. Well, you said sleep. She said hug. It, no, but the hugging is more important to her than the sleeping. Yeah, I know. I mean, but the, just, uh, but, the, but he figures that's what leads to the sleeping, and he gets to sleep. He gets what he wants, well. and then then he comes out and goes, "Hey, I'm not lying to you. We're yeah, just yeah, friends. Yeah. We're just friends." Well, now what's um, so what what do you want out of this uh, this relationship? I mean, what uh, do you want him to be in love? Do you are you in love with him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It just doesn't sound like he's a guy that. Uh, is he going to be able to deal with the responsibilities of the situation he's put himself yeah, in? Yeah, that's another thing because he still lives with his parents and yeah. that's where I'm living with him and now I'm just staying in a hotel right now. Okay, oh. and what, what does he want to do about being a dad? He says he doesn't, he says he wants to one day, but the next day he, he yeah. says he's not sure. Does he know that one day is a month from now? Huh? That one day of being a father is a month oh, from yeah, now. Oh, yeah, I know. Is he an addict? It gets closer and closer and closer. Is he a drug addict? No, he's no. on medication. He's bipolar. Yeah, but he could yeah, still he's be. On he could be a drug addict too. No. Can I ask you about your family and like where is your family? They're they're back in my, uh, Connecticut, where I used to live. Why? Is, what's your relationship with, like with your family? It's strange. I mean, I get along with them and everything, but it's. Uh, what's the problem there? I don't really know if there's a big problem. It's just like... It's a huge like, problem. Their daughter is 20, living in Texas, pregnant with a bipolar guy who's not willing to support her. Living well, in a hotel. Isn't, isn't or in Georgia, Georgia, you're in Georgia, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm in Georgia. In Georgia. I, well. Okay, so do they know you're pregnant? Yeah, oh yeah. Have they offered any help? Yeah, but um, I was going to go back and he persuaded me to stay here with oh. his family. And mm-hmm. I don't he think that... He cares so much about me, but... Yeah, well, but he, he's a liar and a mess. Honestly, I think you got to go home. Seriously, go home. Do, do, you know, do you have a relationship with your parents? Are they, uh, you know, is it any abuse, or abusive relationship no, no. with your parents? No, they just they drive me nuts, and I'll be miserable. What do you mean they drive me nuts? How do they drive you nuts? They just remind me every day how much I'm, how much I screwed up, and what'd you screw up with? <laughs> I didn't go to college. I moved here, and I got pregnant when I was married. Well, okay, look. Oh, you know what, well, though? I mean, they, they make some valid points. Well, no, maybe it's time to go back and regroup. It's yeah, right. not I, I gotta tell you what. I think they are in a position, and emotionally and like financially, to be able to assist you right now. And I think you need Matt more than you need this guy who sounds like a loser. Agreed. And I, I really smell addict in this guy too. He's not yeah. smoking pot every day. No, he doesn't do any drugs. Yeah, hold alcohol. On. Hold on, Drew. No, Let me. I farted. Oh, that's that, could that be uh, what that yeah, was? I smelling addict. Yeah, it's you. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Jen. I, just, I don't know what to do. Because I, I think, you know, seriously, you got to call your folks and you got to go home. That's uh, Seriously. Well, I, I, that's another thing. I meant to, I didn't mention I'm on uh, bed rest because I started having contractions about two weeks ago. Oh, boy. Can she not fly? Can yeah, your parents fly know. out and get you? At least come out. You know, have your parents come out. You need them right now. You need some family. Yep. If you have a decent relationship with them. Uh, it sounds like they'll come out. You're just avoiding them because you don't want to feel that guilt and yeah, shame. Get over the guilt. You're going to have a baby. Get All them right. out there. They can help you. Let me uh, sum this up. I agree completely with Rob and Drew. Uh, this guy's a flake. Uh, you're eight months pregnant, for Christ's sake, and he's on the fence trying to figure out what uh, what he wants to do with his life, whether yeah. he wants to be a dad, whether he wants to be a husband. You need stability for this kid so this kid does not end up in Georgia pregnant 20 years from now. Right. Thank you. And if it's a guy... Oh, well, we'll, we'll uh, cross that path. And, and chances we'll are it's not going to be 100% negative with your parents, you know. Maybe that they'll enjoy having a granddaughter, you know, yeah. or grandson. Very true. Lee? How are you guys doing tonight? You're 39. Yeah, I am. What's up? 
Well, uh, I've been having an affair with a married lady mm -hmm. for five years now. Oh boy. Are you wow. with somebody? No, I'm not. You're single. I'm a single man. How old is she? She's 35. How'd you meet her? Um, co-worker. And does she have kids? Uh, yeah, she has two. Mm -hmm. um, What's going on with her husband? What's, why is she not happy um, with him? No attention. Yeah. You know, it's the old same old scenario. Have yeah. the kids put a couple pounds on. Um, not attractive anymore. Kids around. No time for each other. Yeah. Um, we just, it was, you know, it was one of those scenarios where we just started off as, as friends. Sure. Um, he owns his own company, so he was always, always busy. Yeah. So well, how, how do you sneak around for five years, though? Um, how often, too? Yeah. How, how often? A uh, couple times a month, usually. But it, okay. the problem is it's not all, it's not all sexual. So that's, that's, that's a problem? problem? <laughs> so well, scenario. Guys. No, you know, that's... Um, are you in love with her? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've been in love with her from, from day one. The problem with that is that we started off as friends. Yeah. You know, and, and it just grew in. Problem again? Why that's a problem? Okay, now, why, why doesn't she leave her husband? Um, basically because of the kids. Are you expecting her to leave him? Um, part of me says yes. Okay. Um, I want her to be happy. Can you so wait till the kids are 18? Oh, um, <laughs> well, they're uh, four and six right now, so I don't know if I want to wait another fifty. Right, well, it sounds like that's her plan. Uh, well, yeah, but her she she goes back and forth so often. I think she goes through that guilt, those those guilty feelings. It's very rare to see someone in this kind of situation actually leave the spouse. Right. It doesn't really, and especially if it's a male who's claiming that his wife is mistreating him and he wants to leave. Right. It, it, it never happens. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take a, a brief moment and see if we can just uh, beat the crap out of Lee here verbally. <laughs> Lee, you're 39 years old, for Christ's sake. You got some hefty chick with a couple of kids and a husband. You can't do better than that? You're yeah. 39, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And it's easy to say that should be the time of my life. I'm single. I can travel. I make good money. I have my own home. No, I don't. No, 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 no. Lee. It, it, it's, it's, not about, it's not about living the life of Riley at 39. That was when you were 24. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it's about you having a family and a wife and a stable relationship. What, what the hell's the matter with you? Yeah, well, I mean, I was, I've been divorced for 10 years now. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. I've, got, I've got an 18-year-old son, so I'm, I'm kind of lucky. My, I've gone through that. Mm -hmm. already you know yeah. what do you want out of this situation get to it what is it what what do i want i guess i just we need some you know after five years i really think we need some closure here there you oh, go. Okay. that sounds like you All want right. to get out of this good. thing get out of it well it, you know yeah. how you get closer you don't cl you don't talk to her anymore you move no, no he means he wants her to leave her husband oh, that's right that's the closure you want no yeah that's that's okay oh, well boy. no that's not necessarily the, necessarily the closure you i want to ask you want to ask her get off the pot Exactly, yeah, and the problem right. is she goes through, we'll go through a couple of weeks or so where we don't talk that much, and she's like, okay, look, it, I get it. I'm, I'm pulling away from you because I am seeking help because she's like, I need help with myself. Right. You know what you are? You're her drug. You're yeah. her crutch. Yeah. You know and what? as long as you stay there and continue to put up with this mediocre relationship, she's going to... You're stuck. And you're not you're helping her either. You're not helping her either. You get, go send her back to her therapist. Let her work on herself, and just end the contact. All right. All right. So we'll be that, right back. So, so really, you think that's what we need? Yes. That's the healthiest thing, Lee. <laughs> that's yes. the healthiest well, thing. Yeah. You, you have to work with her, right? Well, uh, yeah. In a way, we do. That. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, so avoid. That, that's going to be even harder. I know. Like I said, we're strong. We can pull away for a while, but she'll go through a a, a lull or something. Well, you know what? You got to take care of you. You know? Yeah. That's right. That doesn't sound like you taking care of you. You need you need to be strong. Forget about her. Put stop putting it off on her. Yes. Lee has to take care of Lee. <laughs> All, right. All right, Lee, good luck. All right, it's, it's it sounds so much lamer when you put the guy's name in there. You seems to be effective, but when you when you put the word Lee, and what the hell who would name their kid Lee? By the way, that's a horrible name for a guy. <laughs> and a horrible name for a girl. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? You wouldn't name your kid Lee, would you? It's not that bad. You don't. Right. You like Lee? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I know a couple of Lees. Really? Yeah. All right. yeah. I don't like Lee. I don't trust a Lee. Huh? Okay. Rob Schneider's our guest tonight. The Animals, the name of the movie. Going to be out uh, tomorrow, June 1st, Friday. We'll take a little break. We'll be back that's after that. That's huge, man. Hello, this is Ron Jeremy. And when I'm not hiding the bacon in some hot and sweaty porno set, I'm listening to Love Lines with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Is that really him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's terrible. Well, I was I was in an airport in, yes. like, I was somewhere in Washington. All of a sudden, Drew, come here. Ron uh -huh. Jeremy. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's his story? <laughs> he's he's, a, he's uh, a very nice man. He's yeah. done more porno movies than anybody <clears throat> who's ever done porno movies. He's yes. bisexual. <clears throat> no, a, I don't think he is. He's a big, fat, hairy Jewish man with a huge schlong who uh, has a bad mustache. And <laughs> he's built been, out a niche for himself, in other words. A niche? Yeah. He's taken over. But if you want to talk about the double standard, there's no such thing as a female version of Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Some chick who's put on 45 pounds, covered with hair, yeah. basically he's gone, body's gone to crap and it's still banging around in the porn film industry. <laughs> I mean, it does not exist. Yet. No. Give it time. God willing, one day it won't. Brian? Hi. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Yeah, I have a question for Rob, actually. Yes? Um, I saw you on Dennis Miller Live a couple years ago, and I know you're an avid Elvis fan. What's up? What's up, man? <laughs> and you uh, you did a story, that your favorite Elvis story, which was when he got on a plane, from, yeah. I guess, uh, from, you know, Graceland, to fly down to Philadelphia to get it. No, 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 Denver. Denver. Yeah, okay. that's just a story I heard from, like, the Elvis camp. And Which what happened? Like, well, wait, well, fill us all. Is that here. where he pulled his badge? No, no, no. He went. He flew uh, supposedly on the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the plane, his private plane in the backyard or whatever. And he flew in and never got off the plane. He just had like them bring the sandwiches up to the plane. I don't know. I like that story. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe it. You know, you've arrived. Yeah, it was just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So no, he, he flew no it was peanut. peanut it was butter. bacon. No, it was like also bacon. It was a special sandwich. He's not. He's not stupid. He's Elvis, but he's not stupid. <laughs> it's got to have you know peanut butter, bacon, the whole deal. It's like two feet long. You know the Elvis stories I like is how he collected badges, basically. Yeah. Like he'd go visit the White House and he'd get Nixon to give him a couple of DEA badges or something, and yeah. then he would stop people and flash that tin. He went on to a plane once, stopped the plane, pulled somebody really? off of the plane. You didn't know no, that no, story? Know that. Some You're coming off, man. That's right. You and A3. Come on. <laughs> Did it before people knew him for who he was? No, they knew him, but it I was like know. it was Elvis and he had a shield. Somebody Did you ever hear the tape where he's screaming at the audience about stuff? He yeah. yeah. Losing his mind. Where was, was loaded So sad. Drugs. I hate yeah. to hear stuff like that. You know? yeah. I don't mind the food stories. Because I think he would he would retell them if he was still around. My honest one time I flew to Denver and I was like, I flew right back. Never got off the plane, man. He didn't like going places. He never performed in Europe, you know, or Japan. He just, I think they would have loved him in Europe. I wish he would have went over there, you know. He, he didn't? Oh, I mean, he went over there, obviously. No, he war, never, he, war he, time, no, he never right? performed. And right. he also never went, like, went into town or anything. He would literally just stay at the house. You know, Priscilla talks about that in her book, and uh, which I read most of, by the way. He would just literally just, you know, go from the, you know, the barracks and just, you know. He wouldn't live in the barracks. He had, like, a house off base. And he would just go to the base. He would never go anywhere. It was his trip. Yeah, you know, he wasn't yeah. interested in other cultures. He had issues. He, he had some things. He had some things. I don't know what the thing is, him and his mama or whatever, but it was something going on there, I think. A special relationship. Oh. Yeah. I, I don't want to call Elvis stupid, but a lot of uneducated guys really love the hell out of their mama. <laughs> the smarter you are, the more you hate your mom. Like, wow. Drew, you're a genius, you hate your parents, yeah. right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's true, though. You don't hear geniuses talking about their mom. Right, or, or, yeah. It's it's always that 700-pound black athlete that's crying when he's talking about his mom. It's Elvis. It's all of a sudden. The water boy, Adam Sandler and the water boy. My right. mama. Right. I, w what is it? I the, love my mama. The simpler you are, the more you no, love uh, mama. Now, is, what do you think of that? That's just, Well, that makes sense, right? I don't know. It's just something I that I, I perceive. There's something nice in that, really. James. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. James, you're 17. Yeah. I What's think dumb up? people are happier. Dumb people are happier. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, look at dogs. Look how happy they are. <laughs> what, do you, what do you got, man? James, what's your question? Hey. Uh, actually, I have two questions, really. Mm hmm. Okay. See, I, I just now transferred into the university that I'm in, Columbia University. Mm hmm. You're 17? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. Okay. And, um. From I'm, San Diego State? I'm sorry? No. From, oh, junior actually, college. It's, actually, it's right. in New York. And um, is this girl that I really, really like, but the problem is, well, she considers it a comic. I don't really see, you know, it to be a dilemma or anything. I think it's pretty cool. What? What? So she's 26, and I'm um, like, I want to like, you know. You're 17? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So? And her thing, you know, what her thing is, though, oh, you're 17, I'm too old for you. She's, um, yeah. she's looking. Yeah, yeah, she's but, just, oh, yeah, but well. she's, she's thinking sex with you is not really sex. Well, she's thinking she needs to settle down with someone. 
What? Right? Why is she thinking, well, I'm wasting my time with the 17-year-old? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Let's get to the bottom of this. Is she newly divorced or out of a long-term uh, relationship? If she were, she'd be into this. She'd be game on. Aha. Uh -huh. But she's point. not. She's not. She's looking for... You know, Drew's good, man. Yeah. Well, I got this figured out. So what do you... What's, I, I what's have, the problem? I have, lunch, I have lunch with her on like almost every other, every other day. Hey, James, have you ever had any, any other girlfriends in your life? Sure. You have? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Why don't you find some hot 17-year-old really smart biatch from Columbia? You know, you know where I'm going with this. Uh, there's nobody who's 17-year-old. Well, how about 19 or 20? Whatever. Lie about your I'm age. Like yeah. You know, Wear I a hat. To. Anyway, grow some scruff. Do you have any tips on performing um, Conolingus? Yes, I think she would really, really, really like enjoy Conolingus. See, I'm thinking this whole story now is, is, is crap. Yeah, you don't. I'm believe not buying. It. I'm not buying. Because it doesn't make sense. Does it? No, it doesn't make yeah. sense. And first of all, 26 year old. First of all, I don't believe you're going to Columbia. Yeah, I am. What streets it on? It's on 116th and Broadway. Okay, we well, got that right. What's <laughs> What's your major? I'm studying assist. Computer information systems. Wow. Well, all right. Now I know why she but, doesn't want to so serious relationships. Yeah. Lots of girlfriends. Anyway, she'd be friends. Hang on a second. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, lots of girlfriends. You mean like you know, lots of... You know what I'm going here, Adam? All right, hold on. Yeah. Drew, calm down tonight. I don't know what's going on with you, but <laughs> Rob has coffee. awakened the sleeping nerd in you. But just <laughs> sit down and relax. You're doing way too much talking. You're throwing me off. I <laughs> can't right. focus here. Gotcha. Lean back like you know. Don't you usually <laughs> nap between uh, 1020 and 1045? No, it starts right at 1050. She oh, okay. passes at me. So what? She's what? She, she, she winks her eye and then, like, let's see, she'll walk by me. She'll, like, rub her butt cheek on me or something like that. How do you know her? I just, we just... I just saw her in the hallway, and then we just thought she just sees me every time, like, like around lunchtime. She's a student in Columbia also? <laughs> I presume. Have you, you ever presume? asked her out? So you've had lunch with her twice, right? No, I have, I have lunch with her more than twice. I had lunch with her a dozen of times. And okay. you don't know if she's a student? I first met her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, you don't know if she's a student or not? She is a student. She is a student. You said you said presume. Yeah, she, she's a student. She has a student ID, and she uh -huh. goes to classes. So All right, she's a student. Okay. Okay. Right. So you had you I didn't have lunch with her. Wait a minute, you did not sit down and have lunch with her for like an hour. You I, sat down. You were you were sitting down. She wa walked by and said hi. No, and you you call that lunch. Hold on. First, I gotta first I gotta figure out this guy's nationality because I'm getting like a crazy Leroy from Fame <laughs> kind of kind of vibe from I him. I got a little something going on. But, but it's got okay. Wait, just out of curiosity, what does my nationality have to do with you helping? I'm trying Leroy? to figure out your dialect, your there, voice. Your, your yeah, voice. Yeah. Adam and I get very affected by voices. Cause that's yeah. all we do is sit here and listen to people. Okay, voices. so what does my nationality sound like? Well, sometimes uh, you sound black, and, and then sometimes, sometimes Asian. you sound Asian. Yeah. You sound like a black guy who's not a good dancer. No, no, you know, you, you sound like an Asian guy who's been hanging out <laughs> well, with too well, many let, black let, guys. Well, let me compliment you on your assumption. I am African American. You're gay, Drew. Please, am I really gay? I'm not gay. There's a hint of that in there. You know, there's a little bit. You know I what? I get more coochie than tampons. I'm far from gay. Oh, but anyway, oh. I'm, I want to put all that Okay, in. all right. I'm going to tell you how to go down on a woman in that okay. case. I mean, I'll just put you on hold. Well, uh, trade tips. I use a technique called the carpet bombing technique where I don't try to find the separate parts. I take out the <laughs> whole Rob village. Throw up his coffee and relax. Yeah. I'm not... Yeah, that's my noise I make. There you go. This is with... Uh, oh, my oh, God. Oh, this is oh, uh, You know... Oh. Is, is it a carpet bombing? It's just, it's, it's a sloppy, uh, it's a, not a technique technique? Well, yes. What I'm saying is, is a lot of people try to do the smart bomb where they just try to take out the target, which is yeah, the yeah. clitoris, or they try to find the G-spot. Yeah. I don't know where any of that is. I'm drunk. It's dark. <laughs> I'm disoriented oftentimes. So I'm just trying to do it a long enough sure to start on my, me. My plan no, is strafe. I'm going to take out the whole area. <laughs> strafe the whole town. See? I'm going to take the whole village out. <laughs> Well, I don't want to take the whole village out, but there's a key huts that I want to hit. I right. also I want to sneak up on the village. I, I don't see. want to just just jump on the village and napalm. You're wasting your time, Rob. I want to just like you know you know at least the first couple of times of the kind of like give her, give her the illusion that I'm really into this, you know, and oh, then I see you know, but no no I like to you know make it a pleasant experience. I actually enjoy it. So so you say like take out the guard tower on I the go top? yeah and then move your way and then go away from it for a while. I see. It's a tease kind of thing. You know? Right right. All right, you, you can't. It, it's hard to go. It's hard to screw it up too much if you're enthusiastic. But just don't, don't overdo it. I think I screw that up all the time. Really? Yeah. What's the technique then, Drew? I'm not sure. It's first of all, it's you need to be in the vicinity of the proper anatomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have vicinity, and right. you need to use the the flat part of the tongue. Well, the flat yeah. part. Yeah. Not some girls, answer. it's some girls, it's sideways. Some it's straight yeah. up and down. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 
All right. And yeah, well, the carpet ba- bombing is actually a viable technique as long as you're, you. you're in the right place. The right yeah, you got to eventually get back to the important yeah. area. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to get frustrating right, for well, everyone involved yes. and the people watching it at home. And Slow, I, rhythmic, yes. and hang around the top. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, there's just some, some homosexual issues with that man, I think. Brandon? James, yeah. I, I, you know what I got from James? I got sexually abused, sexual compulsive. That, that's really? Like, oh, yeah. All right. Brandon? Yeah? You're 13? Yeah. What's up? Okay, like, when I masturbate, normally I can, like, come, you know, but when now, like, recently, I, I can't, you know? It won't come out. How recently? Uh, it, it's been going on for, like, a week and a half. Are you on any medication? No. Nah. Anything else happening? You're losing weight? How many times were you masturbating the last time something came out? Eight? Nine times? What? What? Did, mean, you, did you go on a holy terror before you ran out? Um, no. You sure? Yeah. How long was the session? Usually, like, on average. Yeah. Usually I go for about ten minutes. Ah. Yeah. And how many times a week are you doing this? Five, six. Okay. Well, okay. There you go. I think your body's telling you to Slow chill. Down. Slow down. Yeah. And you're fine. And don't I, worry you about sure it. You sure you're not taking any medication at all? No cold oh, medicine? I, I used to be on medication, but, like, not anymore. What were you taking? Um, Adderall. So you have ADD. I guess. ADHD. Yeah. You're 13. Are you yeah, taking take it easy. Are you taking anything like that now? Anything. It's cold no. medicine, nothing. Because that, that sort of what you're describing is typically a medication thing where it's just you can't achieve an orgasm. And I tell you what. You know what? They got this thing now. It's called a book. Read it. Get out of the bath or your home. Pop Schneider here. Yeah. Just Jeez. go. Always read, man. Man, all you the success do? has made you you're yeah. not cool anymore, man. I'm right. not cool. <laughs> then stay in the master. Yes. Take it back. I agree no, with I just, Rob. No, I just... You pick up the uh, the uh, key to the hour-long orgasm by uh, <laughs> Dr. Schmegma, <laughs> and uh, I agree. You read. You read. Yeah, I mean, take it easy. Believe me, oh, in a absolutely. week, you're going to be back I, I actually agree. Back in business, the business of jizz-making yourself, so it's all good. That's right. We will uh, take a little break. Rob Schneider is our guest tonight. The Animal is coming out tomorrow, everyone, and we'll be back. <laughs> oh, wait. Here we go. The it's love line. The steak. Oh, Rob <laughs> Schneider is in the middle of uh, telling uh, one of his many uh, comedy bomb stories. When I was bombing, and anyway, this basically was at the Irvine Improv, <laughs> and I refused to get off the stage, and uh, they were flashing me lights. My attitude was, you know, you guys kiss my ass. Somebody rented the whole place out, so I didn't feel sorry for these people. And this one, uh, my favorite story is my <laughs> friend in the background was like hiding because he thought I was going to write what was going to happen, <laughs> and this. Um, uh, this woman, irate woman, comes up to the, the club manager and says, uh, My friend ordered steak medium, and it's rare. And could you get that guy off the stage? He sucks. <laughs> I like how his second is in, in importance to the steak. You know, it's, in, in a uh, club that is not known for its restaurant, the culinary delights. <laughs> yeah. It's sure. an improv. improv in Irvine. That so. is uh, the voice of uh, Rob Schneider, who uh, can be found nationwide on uh, many, many screens starting tomorrow, Friday, June 1st. <coughs> Phone number here, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. <laughs> That's and what I have a romantic scene with a goat. How was Colleen as an actress? She's terrific. She's natural. You know, she said she, was she, she never acted before? before. She before? No. Okay. She said she never acted before. My attitude was great. Yeah. Don't start now. And what you do naturally is mm-hmm. terrific. So, you know, I'm... We had a lot of film to like with animals. Where you take your time, and it was nice because they had a little success on the last movie, and they give you a little room this time. We will uh, go to the phone now got? and speak to uh, E K, who's nineteen. Bring it on, man. What's up? What's, What's up? up? What's First up? of all, I want to say, uh, Rob Schneider, you're the second funniest man alive. I'll take that, man. That's huge. Yeah, next to Adam Carolla. Oh, great. Hey, that's respect. I take that. <laughs> What's up, E K? Before I ask something to Rob Schneider, I want to say that Adam Crowley I made one of the worst mistakes of my life. What? I transferred from Skyline Junior College and I ended up going to a five-year junior college, San Francisco State. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, dude, I know. I grew up right right down the street from Skyline. Yeah, so anyway... Um, He's underwhelmed. Rob, right I heard you came from Pacifica. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I live in Pacifica right now. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, not really. Well, um, <laughs> I'm Filipino and I'm really proud that you got there. I just want, wanted to know how you started out. Uh, you know, I was a stand-up comedian. I was writing jokes uh, when I was about 13. Did you go to so, college? Uh, I went to Skyline. No, actually, I went to, uh, where did I go? San Francisco State for like a little summer stock theater. I didn't San do much college. Yeah. I, just, I went to uh, junior college in the College of Marin. 
to get into a theater program. And but really, I, I was smoking nightclubs for me. That wasn't for me. Alcohol, waitresses, smoking nightclubs. How old are you? Uh, how old am I now? No, um, when you were born. Oh, and I was. Uh, I'm in my uh, late thirties. I'll just say mid thirties. <laughs> Let's stick to mid thirties. Okay. Hey, uh, E. K. I'll yeah. write it down for you. You want to get into uh, comedy? Yeah. Okay. You can be, uh, uh, there's not that many Filipino stand-ups. There's not a lot of call for it, I'll be honest with you. Well, uh, but it's a, it's <laughs> we need a, a Filipino guy for this. But it's a niche, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, it's, you know what we got to have for this movie is a Filipino guy, a Filipino comedian. No, um, I don't know. I, 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 you know, my Filipino relatives are great, great, the best audience you can get, you know. But, um, hey, if you write your own movies, that's the key to it. My, my career was in the toilet until I started writing my oh, own movies. Oh, <laughs> that was my plan, too. Hey, one last question. <laughs> oh, here it comes. <laughs> What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite Filipino dish? Well, I, if my mom makes chicken adobo, I can go right to sleep, no matter what. Uh, chicken adobo is the best. If anybody, that's the best chicken dish in the world. By uh, how much Filipino do you have in you? I got um, my mom's is half Filipino, so like I, I got I don't know. You is, it, is that a big half. Filipino community up there, in Pacifica? In Daly City, it was. It was uh -huh. like a way station for Filipinos. My house. They would come in from uh, the Philippines. They'd stay at my house for a little bit. They'd get their own place, and then they boom, boom, constant streaming of Filipinos, and they were great people. Uh -huh. you know? and, and what's your dad? German? Uh, German. Yeah, because you don't you don't seem too Filipino. Uh, I don't I don't get out in the sun a lot, so I, I look kind of pale. But I, I you know I don't know what to say. I, uh, uh, I I know a few words. Did Bas you, Bastus, that's about it. Did your dad uh, meet your mom during the war or my, something? No, uh, my uh, dad met my mom. Thought she was Japanese and fell in love. You know, because I just <laughs> read, you know, Susie Wong or something like that. And, you know, so he uh, and then he found out like two years after their marriage, she's not really Japanese. So it, it's all worked out. Nicole, yes, you're twenty one. Twenty two. What's up? Um, I can't figure out. Like, I don't know if it's if I'm taking it out on myself. Because, like, the guys that I date don't want to be friends afterwards, and I can't figure that out. Uh, that's because you're dating guys. <laughs> How right. old are you? 22. Yeah, G guys. Guys, when they after they're done with the relationship, want to just check out. Most of them. I mean, there's some evolved guys can maintain a friendship. Are you, well, are you yeah. one of those guys? Listen, yeah, I, I try yeah. to. But yeah. most guys want to just duck out and be gone. So you, but you sleep with these guys, and then they break up with you. Is that it? Well, it's like a year long relationship. Okay. W women are much more evolved when it comes to stuff like this because their position is, hey, this is a person I cared about. It's an intimate relationship. It's oh. a friendship. I value him. And his thing is, i, I got to get out of here. And, and, uh, well, it's really, that's okay. that, I don't know. No, Guys it's like, well, it's like a, a, a boss wondering why his employees stuck around after he stopped paying them yeah. and fired them. You, you know what I mean? There's nothing in it for him anymore. <laughs> why keep showing up? Why keep punching that is in? such a dreary you know, image. You know, I, I, even think, I think there's even more of a negative than that. That somehow guys feel exposed or something and they just want to get out when they're, when they're done. Vulnerable. Yeah, I don't there's know what it is. There's so, nothing to do. To well, first of all, you're dating guys in their 20s. They're still kids. You know, They're emotionally yeah, right. more immature than you. Actually, they're like in their 30s. Well, well guys in their 30s are going to be more <laughs> emotionally immature than you. Oh, well, I don't know. Who? Guys, it's tough. Guys don't want to commit. It's just a thing. Who broke up with who, though? I, I mean, did. You're breaking up with them. Because they don't want to commit. Sort of, yeah. There we go. Yeah. And <laughs> then, and then you, but why do you want to be friends with them after you break up with them? Um, I don't know, because and, I felt and, that if I spent that much time with them, it's kind of a waste to yeah, throw you, away. You, right. you women do that because you sleep with a guy and you have to rationalize it that uh, you're now best friends and you have to <laughs> hang out and all this. And then, uh, sure, I slept with but them. Then, then, love, they, it's love. Right, they actually right. also experience a loss when they lose the person. Right, but then a new guy shows up and the old guy's hanging around and he doesn't like you hanging around with the old guy. And then, God forbid, one day you get married and you want to invite the old guy to the wedding Ooh, and it gets that's really just weird. Gross. That's just gross. Yeah. Yeah, just find a guy. He'll commit. You commit. And you got your own relationship. Um, another thing is, is um, here it comes finding <laughs> no, just finding men friends that don't want to sleep with me. Well, there you go. Well, that's the the age old problem. Yeah, e either you're going to be attracted to them, or they're going to be attracted to you. And uh, I just that's why you have the friendship. Well, why why is this such a deliberate plan, Nicole? I mean, why are you putting so much thought into it? I don't know. Well, why is this a problem? You Don't to, you? Yeah. Uh, you go to school? Um, yeah, college. You live in your home? No, I live by myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got a few good things going. You got a boyfriend right now? No. No. Yeah. All right. Would you like one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Sort of. Do you have girlfriends? Uh, yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. All right. And you have no male friends? 
Um, I do, but that problem is that they okay. always want to sleep with me, and that kind of gets annoying. Well, you know what? That's it's their that's problem. every woman. You yeah, know, it's their you problem. know, that's the guy's problem. Yeah, yeah. You, you know any gay guys? No. <laughs> you know? I wish. Yeah, I wish I knew more. Sort of hanging around with gay guys. <laughs> They'll cheer you right up. They're very jovial. I they, don't think they, you have a problem, by the way. It's very normal. It's well, like, I'm trying to figure out why she, why she perceives this all to be such a problem right now. Are you graduating college? Um, no. Why don't I you have more? While. Why don't you have more friends? Um, just in general. I think just because, well, like I'm not in school right now. But I'm going back, and then but most people my your age, job's just kind of dead in, and I just need to meet more people. And yeah, most people your age hang out in groups, you know, the groups of friends. You know what I think you should do is just, you know, fall in love with yourself and just do things for yourself and stop, you know, don't think about getting happiness from other people at this point. You know, I just you can do things for yourself, you I'll, know. I'll tell you what Nicole has to do right now is do what's best for Nicole. <laughs> Nicole needs to love Nicole. There you go. Or you need to be like me who's in love with the notion of being in love. Which yeah, is, yeah, which that's is, true. Which is a mild twist on falling in love with yourself, which I'm going to do later. <laughs> when we come back, we'll speak to Matters 18. When you go home? Maybe on the ride home. Okay. So there's like a pattern that you're in. You're spinning in that same pattern. Dude, you beat off. The that's loving right. himself is nightly. Yes. <laughs> uh, Matt is uh, 18. He's had a constant erection since he was 12. Doctors can't help him. So uh, we'll talk to him. Perfect. After this. <laughs> It's Loveline, everybody. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Rob Schneider is our guest tonight. Thank you, sir. Rob can be uh, found on the, uh, the animal, which is uh, coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, June 1st. That is right. Hey. Friday. In hey. a uh, huge, huge release, so it'll be everywhere. Everywhere we everywhere. are, it will be, and uh, places we're not as well. Matt? Yes. You're 18? Uh, yes. I've... Had an erect. I masturbated when I was twelve, and I've had an erection ever since. Mm -hmm. And I've seen several different doctors, and one told me to call Guinness. I, I was wondering the if beer company or the no, world uh, records. World records. Uh huh. It never goes and down. No, it, I to hide it. I put a sweatband for a head around my thigh and tuck it in. My parents know. They've tried several people. A sweat band keeps it down to your thigh? I yeah. gotta do that. I gotta try that. And you see this having been triggered by your masturbating. Well, I don't know what triggered it, but I mean, it doesn't go down. I was wondering if there's any type of, like, opposite of Viagra drug or anything you guys knew about. I, I think, um, uh, this may sound cruel, but if you watch that Margaret Cho uh, half-hour <laughs> comedy special where she's wearing the leather jumpsuit from uh, 1994... Oh. Uh, nipples are kind of pointing through in a weird way. I I think that might kill it. And now you run the risk of never having it return. But well, it's always uh, a risk. The, the Margaret Cho video always does it for me. <laughs> Is there? Are you on any medication? Uh, I take inhalers as <laughs> needed. You don't take those all the time. No, just it's. And do you still masturbate? Huh? Uh, not for about eight months now. Ooh. Do you have arousal? Uh, yeah. You get normally I aroused. Have a girlfriend, I have sex. Have you thought about entering the porn business? <laughs> no. As a side job. Not no. a full-time thing. Does it does it ever get harder than what it is, or is it always no, the same state? It's always the same state. Huh. And uh, is this a uh, priapism, Drew? I mean, is that what this would be? Well, priapism is a, is a painful erection, though. Does this, is it, does this hurt? No, it never. It hadn't hurt. That's what one of the doctors said it might have been, but they ruled that out. Cause Did you see a urologist? Huh? Did you see a urologist? Uh... But, you know, you should you should go to a university center, see the, go to the Department of Urology. Okay. There's got to be something they could do for No, you they could fix yeah. that. Yeah. It, it, you know, the great part will be when they uh, put you in that gown that ties up in the back and take your underpants away from you and have you uh, walk up and down the hall in the slippers. That's going to be humiliating. Do you... What if you take it? I'll tell you what always kills a boner for me. Take it. Oh, please tell us. Yeah, it works. Take it, pull it up against your belly, and and wear it in your pants like you were like you had a gun stuffed down your pants. You know what I mean? In your waistband. Like we're try it right now while we're holding like on. Like Robert Blake would wear You're his gun. You're talking about kink it, kink it to the blood. No, can't get I'm it. yeah. Pull it up and put it against your belly, and then just put the head right under the waistband. 
What's wrong with a, uh, a cock ring? Well, that's his problem. I mean, that's not going to work. Okay, just try to throw it out there. Besides, I don't think you can get one on when you're erect. Matt? Yes. Did you do that? Uh, no, I didn't. What are you wearing right now? I'm wearing boxers. I'm pretty much falling asleep. All right, stand up and put it against your belly. Why stand up? Yeah, it works better that way. That's, and that's how I kill a boner. You're weird. Really? Yeah. Wouldn't that kill it for you? No? Well, how you're... does this affect sports for you? Nothing's happening. No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, give it a couple go, of minutes. Go to the urologist. You'll, you'll figure something out. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, but medicines offhand that would do this. But man, beta blocker, yeah. ha has it been a serious, serious boner for six <laughs> years? Yeah, it's a full-fledged boner for about six years. It's like embarrassing when I'm in locker rooms taking shower. Guys make fun of me and stuff like that. Yeah, why do you take showers in the locker room with that boner of yours? Because I don't want to not take a shower. Do want to miss out on life? I'm thinking this is all crap. He's putting a sketch. It's yeah. a joke. I don't buy it because he's giggling. All right, man. I, I don't I, buy it. I don't know if I buy it either. I Six don't. years. I mean, it's that's a that's a long one. Two years I buy. That's Six right. years. No. Two years, twenty-four months. Erection, I buy it. <laughs> Travis. Yeah. You're nineteen. Yeah, I'm nineteen. What's up? How long well, have you had your erection? <laughs> well, I've had several. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say to the guy that called earlier. I'm dating a 26-year-old, and I'm 19, and so he's got to keep his head up. Yeah. He has going? other issues, though. You're doing okay. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. You smoke um, a lot of weed? Um, I used to, but I haven't <laughs> smoked weed for a year. All right. Um, Good. <laughs> yeah, it's actually much better. So what's your question? Um, well, I used to masturbate a lot when I was younger, like anywhere from four to like seven times a day. Mm -hmm. And now, what, like... What do you mean by younger? Um, well, I started off when I was 15. Yeah. And, um, so that's what I mean by younger. But, um... Unacceptable. <laughs> my, uh, libido has decreased, and it's just, it's it's not necessarily hard for me to get up anymore, but it's just... You drinking a lot of coffee? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, I just, it, um, which I, I don't really want to, uh... You don't want to have sex? Well, I... Not as much as I used to when I was younger. What's up with your 26-year-old girlfriend? Um, nothing. Yeah, what's going on with that? Are you, having, are you having sex with her? Yes. Is she divorced? No, she's never been married. She was a virgin until she met me. No, wait, so you were masturbating five times a day, right? Anywhere from four to seven. Sometimes. Right. Are you having normal sexual relations with her? Yes. Well, then what's the, what's the deal? I don't get it. What's the problem? You're sort of down to normal now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I you were you were incredibly overly sexual and abusing yourself, and now <laughs> you're kind of normal with the chick. How long have you been with her? Um, for almost six months now. So she was a virgin till the age of twenty six. Yes. What's up with her? Um, she was practicing Catholic. Yeah. And kind of still is, but yeah, isn't mm -hmm. much anymore. All right. Yeah. All right. I don't totally trust her. Is she nuts. No, she's perfectly sane. So right. you were addicted to marijuana and a compulsive masturbator, right? No, I, I was never addicted. You just smoked a lot of pot? No, not a lot of pot. Just like every once in a while, I'd, I'd buy like an eighth. And I don't like the term chronic masturbator. I think habitual. Yeah, yes. masturbator. Right? And why did you quit if you weren't into pot? I mean, if you weren't addicted to it? It, just, it didn't do anything for me, really. It just All it did was uh, spend my money and, and make me think about things that I didn't want to think about. Like what? Just, um... A lot of I would think about a lot of eternity and like what things would happen to me after I was died. After were I were you died. depressed during all that time? Um, kind of, but not really. Has anybody suggested you're bipolar or anything like that? Uh, no. I, I, would you I, like somebody to? What you don't, you don't wear, Travis? <laughs> when when I was younger, I was, I was always borderline ADHD. Okay. Um, my parents never put me on any medication mm -hmm. or anything like that for okay. it. All right. Okay. Well, listen, sounds like everything's going all right for you now. I mean, you got a 26-year-old virgin. It's all working out. You're not smoking pot? You're, you're going to school? Yeah, I go to the community college here. No. All right. But yes. I'm going to a four-year school, Adam. Right. Yeah. Good, man. Where are you going to go? Um, I'm thinking U Dub or Arizona State. Okay. Arizona State, by the way, is just a junior college with a football team that uh, does well <laughs> each and year. And some hot chicks. And hot chicks. That's, that makes it a four-year school. Day. That's true. All right, Travis. And a bell tower. Good times.
All right, thanks, Adam. Yeah, I don't know what his problem was, but it, 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 it didn't sound like much. Sound like he's just up late. Could, could not yeah. get my hands around that guy. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, you're 15. What's up? Well, um, my girlfriend. We just started going out today. She invited me to come over and spend the night at her house. Mm-hmm. Whoa, how old is she? She's 15, also. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Great parents. <laughs> yeah. Or her, um, yeah. Yeah, I wish. And I'm not. I'm a virgin, but I'm not sure if I should go or not. Because I mean, I'm really into like losing my virginity when I get married, and you know, right, stuff like well, that. Then don't go. Well, wait a minute. Where's Where's her parents? Are they going well, out of town? Her parents are going to be there. It's just I'm not sure if I should. Are the parents going to be in the same room? Out. What's the deal? Well, she never said anything about actually having sex, but you know, I'm not sure if she will want to or not. Okay, I got to ask you a question. I, do you have any feelings towards? Man. Yeah, I Man. Do. Right? Yeah. You do. Okay. No, no, wait a minute. I don't <laughs> no. think you heard that. Do you have any feelings towards men? No. Attractions to no. other guys no. at all? Not at all. Because I don't know any 15-year-old no. male will turn that down, just so you know. No. That's not... Yeah, we hear that once in a while, but I, I think... You, I don't. I, I bet you this young no, lady, <laughs> uh, sex has not even crossed her mind. She just wants you to come over. So go on over there and have a nice time. And just you know, talk about... She'll think it's cute, the quaint. Uh, she'll, does, she'll like your, your I mean, values. I don't understand why she's offered you to sleep over when her parents are there. Won't her parents object to that? Oh, I'm not sure because her parents are divorced. So, I mean, oh, her, they're, they're... her mom knows I'm going to be over there. Yeah. Perfect. And, and why did she suggest sleeping over, though? Do you live far away from her? Yeah. Okay, so it's a, the kind of thing where you couldn't go home that night because you live too far. Yeah. How do your parents feel about that? Uh, this invite? Well, they're not too sure about it either. Oh, well, Lewis, well, you got to calm down. All right. Yeah, I think I think she just wants to spend a little time with you. What base right. have you got to with her? Huh? What base, sexually? Uh, nowhere, sexually. You've got nowhere. Have you kissed her? Um, no. Is that what you're afraid of, that, that whole experience? No, no, kiss. Do you want to kiss her? Yeah. Have you... So, hey, you've not tongue-kissed her? No. No kiss. Wait, no. what is up with this? I, how is but she even she, your... She, she's weird at times, and she's talked about it before, so I'm not... Talked really about what? About having sex. Okay. You sure she's your girlfriend? Yeah. Aren't you supposed to kiss your girlfriend? Aren't you supposed to make out with her at 15? I mean, we just started going out, like, yesterday, so... Ah, oh, there we go. It's all gonna work out, buddy. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> it sounds like, you know, the first 24 hours of a relationship well, you know is the toughest. A, a day is in 15-year-old years. Yeah. yeah, but you started going out with her yesterday. She invited you to sleep over that day? She may break up with you this weekend. She's planning it for, uh, yeah. And you've got all these wild preconceived notions about her and her family. <laughs> Get relax. Chill out, man. All right. Go see a movie this weekend, preferably mine. That's okay. right. Go see the animal. Will do. All right. Very fine. Right. Okay. You don't know if it's funny. Shut up. <laughs> Come on. He's got to give me the benefit of the doubt. I, I, I will say, based on Rob's previous work, it will be very funny. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I still couldn't figure out the guy's rap. I, he, they're, they've not made out. They're not boyfriend and girlfriend. He met her yesterday. She asked him if he, if he wanted to sleep over the day. Look, if after some girl met, asked me when I was 15 years old to sleep over, I'm sleeping over. I'm not calling a show and asking what they think. Yeah. I'm thinking there's something else going Both on Both those last two guys were playing handball against curtains. Yeah, it's hard to figure out what their question was. Hey, uh, Damien, I want to talk to some chicks. I'm talking to way too many dudes on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't, don't give me excuses. Just get some chicks on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you want to try this, Jesse? Jesse? Hey, what's up? Jesse, all the males, dude? All males up there. Jeez. Let's pass, let's pass that one. All right. Well, then they're all guys. They're right. all guys? Let's all take, right. take some blind ones. Keep, See keep, if the guys have girls. Through some blind calls till you get a girl. Hello? Really? Yeah, sure, all right. What do you got? Hello? Hold on. No, 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 Chick? No, no. Here's what you do. Here you go. Chick? I tried that. Hello, girl. Hello? There you go. Look at Dr. Drew. What's your name? Laura. Laura? Laura. Yes. How old are you? You're 26? <laughs> 32. Perfect. What's your question? I have a daughter, and my husband likes to kiss her obviously because she's his daughter and a lot of times she says no and he makes her kiss him anyway and i want to know if that's healthy if he should not kiss her because she says no because um to teach her not boundaries you know what i mean yeah how old is she she's two two boring <laughs> yeah it's a horrible call is he using his tongue no i i think no. it, i think it's okay to um i think it's okay to kiss her too 
Right. You do. I, I, I mean, you force it on her? Not force it. I mean, if the child is objecting strongly, no. I mean, yes, you have to be respectful of her, her boundaries. But I think it also helps her if... You know, as long as you're not forcing her, it helps her understand that she is l to learn how to express herself in an affectionate parent. Right, hold still understand. while she's being raped. Is that what you're saying, Drew? No, I think I think kids need to learn how to express love a little bit. They need to. Be is able to is your husband a good guy or does he scare her? Oh, no, he's a great guy. Does he scare you? No, not at all. No. Well, then, then you're all right. Fine. Come here and give me a hug. Yeah. <laughs> you're all right. Okay, next caller. All right. I'd rather have a guy than that kind of phone call. Let's see. Hello. Hello. Hopefully a chick. Hello. 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 No, Hello? Oh, it's a dude. Hold Let's on. Go. All right, Drew. We got nothing but dudes up there. What happened? Who's our best dude prospect? There you go. Jesse? Hello? You're 14? Yeah. What's going on? I just want to say, like, uh, to Rob, like, oh, my God, I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> you are the reason why, like, I want to be, like, an actor. I wanted to be He's from Pacifica too. Yeah, from Pacifica. And when I I was like in Ortega in sixth grade I had like what? and you came for some reason like I think it's like to support the music something. Yeah, yeah. We have a music program that uh, my family and uh, some uh local leaders of uh, the civic community. Yeah, that's it's a good program. Hey listen, you know what you do? No don't put any pressure on yourself. Just go see some funny movies. Uh, and uh, write, I started writing jokes about your age, and just relax. There's no pressure, you know? And if it leads down that road, the main thing I say, it's not about making a living or being famous. It's about doing something you enjoy. Yeah. And if you enjoy performing, then you perform. Hopefully there's like a theater program in the, in, in the town. Uh, that, and we're actually going to build a, uh, performing, a little performing uh, arts center there that we're working on in the next five years. And it'll be a place to perform for kids. And to just take it easy, and you know, you can write jokes and perform for your friends and stuff. And that's what I, that's what we did. And when I was in high school, there's a talent show at, at uh, Terranova High School that I did. Yeah, that's and there's no pressure, and it's nice. But do what excites you and have a good time. And if I can make it, anybody can make it. And you started writing jokes at 13. Yeah, my parents thought I was I was nuts. Actually, you know, it's up till two o'clock in the morning writing jokes, and they like, actually took me to see a psychologist. And he was a great guy, Ken Church. He actually said, you know, he's not crazy. He's an artist. You know, and that was. It was great, but that's not what my parents wanted to hear, so they wanted to take me to somebody else. So you're doing, you, you're writing stand-up jokes? Yeah, just jokes and stories and stuff, because like, I was excited about, like, that was the first thing I was ever excited about, you know? And who, who did you watch? Who were you into? I, I, I was really into Monty Python. That was, like, the biggest, that was just such a charge. You know, those guys were just, you know, brilliant and obviously just, you know, weren't afraid to be stupid or whatever. They, just, they, they tried to please themselves and... Richard Pryor. I like Cheech and Chong. I was a little little kid, you know. And so, did you go out and watch like you know uh, Life of Brian and the Holy yeah. Grail and, and all anything that stuff? comedy thing? Whoever could drive me to there, you know. Sometimes my dad would. He he took me to see a uh, Groove Tube. Oh which yeah, was so funny. My dad, you know, I was what, was like ten or something. My dad didn't care. He took me to anything funny. Yeah. I saw that was Kentucky, dirty too. I saw Kentucky, Kentucky Fried, Fried movie. That only. was a great movie. Wait a minute, awesome. I saw it on on like a you know some cable channel recently. You don't realize how pathetic and primitive that film was. It, 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 it was it low now. budget. It doesn't matter. It was we laughed so hard. Primitive, but, I mean, but it, it was funny. But it, it was cutting edge at the yeah, time. Yeah, at the time, yeah. Now it's like, oh my God, why do we Why do we think this is funny? It's very hard to even laugh at it now. Yeah. Oh, please. Have you seen it recently? She was six feet of black dynamite. <laughs> he was a short Hasidic Jew. <laughs> Cleopatra Schwartz. <laughs> While she burnt the ghetto to the ground, he kindled the Sabbath candles. Well, some things, some things, some things don't great. age as well. But at the time, you know, I remember, you know, just being turned on by stuff. Like, you know, Richard Pryor's comedy albums. I remember George Carlin, uh, like, uh, the class clown was hilarious. And then Toledo Windbox, he discovered cocaine or something. Pryor it wasn't was as funny. Right. Pryor's, Pryor's the greatest ever. The greatest ever. Anyone, right. Anybody who says he's not the greatest stand-up ever is just blatantly wrong. And doesn't have a, the knowledge of comedy. He was the greatest stand-up ever. You know, it's funny. I actually asked him one time. I, I met him one time, and I said, "Boy, that the first stand concert was like the prototype doctorate in stand-up comedy." And he said, "You know why? I didn't really have the the material down. I mean, and six months later, it was tight. It was better. And just you know, can imagine what that was like. He didn't have it figured out yet. He was huh. still working on that stuff. What, what uh, that would have been." Yeah, he was a genius, and I'm amazed at all the guys who came after him that just did sort of basically him. blatant rip yeah. Not oh, yeah, even yeah, rip-offs, yeah. they're yeah. just doing second, him. Second uh, uh, generation version of him, not as good as him. You right. Know? Debbie? Yes. You're 21? Yeah. Um, I've been listening to your show, and there was 
a girl that you guys were talking to, and she was a size 34 double D or something. Yeah. And mm-hmm. she was thinking about getting a reduction because of how she felt of people looking at her or whatever. Okay. And I was, and you were talking to her as long, as long as she wasn't having any problems or anything to keep them. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and anyway. she, but also, Deb, she was like 15. Oh, well. And we were trying to say, look, you know, just cool out a little while. I mean, how old are you? Decision. Did you have a breast reduction? No. No, but I'm I'm 34D. Okay, how old and are you? Bouncy, bouncy. Nice. How old are you? 21. I'm 21. Okay, what's going on? Is it hurting and your back or something? I have back problems. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you were saying something about back exercises or something like that? Yoga is a darn good thing, and it can strengthen your... I know it sounds weird, but if you have a posture where you're, you're sticking your shoulders back, it's, uh-huh. it's going to help a little bit. But, you know... How uh, how big is the rest of you? The, uh, I'm 5'7", 135. You're overweight. Mm-hmm. True, please. No, she's not. not and, uh, she's yeah. not over, how, how tall is she? 5'7". She's yeah, not overweight. She's right. No, but she's lying. Most, most of that's boobs at this I point, isn't lying. it? I She's 5'5", five, five, and she's uh, 152. You're fat. Drew, please. Uh, how tall? How, how Really, how heavy are you? You used to I'm, be 135. I'm 135. Get on a scale, right? right. Do you have a scale right there? No, I'm in my truck. Oh, truck. No one owns a truck who's under 150. Get on the scale on your truck. Take the <laughs> scale out of your truck. Step on it. No, drive your truck on one scale. of those big, yeah, Get out of the big, car. Yeah, get on scales it. scales and do the math. <laughs> okay. Hey, Debbie. Yeah. Uh, 34D is not a mammoth bust. It's a, it's a nice bust. You should be happy. But it's not it's not crazy novelty big. Yeah, I know, but I'm, I have back problems. Have you thought about I'm gaffer tape? From that. It, it could be an upper back. Uh-huh. Upper back and neck? Uh, yeah, kind of. Would, would you want to do something for this? How about, so, seriously, yoga and some weights, and if you yeah. drop like five pounds, you'll drop some boob weight. And I, yeah, well, I was thinking about that, too. Absolutely. And, and, and if not, if yoga doesn't do it, there's physical therapy, there are other sorts of modalities you can My get into. My girlfriend really does, does a lot of yoga, and she's got very large breasts, and oh, it, yeah. it's, it's a tough but thing. But you know what? She does yoga, and there's a certain thing with her posture. A lot of girls don't want to stick their boobs out and put their shoulders back, but actually the strongest part of your back are your shoulders. So if you if you kind of arch your back and all kind of looks, you're putting your best foot forward there, but it's going to relieve the pressure and put the weight on the strongest part of your back as opposed to your neck. What kind of yoga does she do? It's just hatha yoga. And it's uh, and yoga will also strengthen your... your you got to do some weights, too, for your neck and stuff. And, and check out your posture. Chances are your posture is That's not very good. You're right. What kind of yoga? Hatha yoga. Hatha yoga? Uh, hatha. Asahara yoga also. And uh, what is that? Ash- Ashtanga yoga. Ashtanga. That's the that's the hot yoga. Yeah, that's you know, but the hatha yoga is a little easier, and you know, especially for beginners if you want to get in there. But honestly, trust me, do some weightlifting. Get into the gym, you know, and it'll impress people because they'll they want to help you because you got big boobs. Does she do the Does she do the uh, hot yoga too, where they uh, they sweat? The room they, up? They, she does that too. Yeah, she digs that. You know, she's into it. I I don't know as much. I like doing yoga just you know without a bunch of sweaty people around me actually. Yeah. But, but then once you get in there, you get over it that the sweaty people because you can't help but concentrate on what you're doing. Let, let me just tell uh, everybody about the uh, medicinal uh, uses for sweat. None. I've been. You're talking to a guy who's been sweating his ass off his entire <laughs> life, and I'm n- no, it's no good better for, for it. it. It is good for you. Is it? I get sw- toxins out of your system. Nah, I don't good. know. True. You've seen how much I sweat, right? So I think sweat is good because your muscles are working. It's, it's yeah, a yeah. good state to be in. Absolutely. But what if just you're to be overheating? But if you're like you're me this, and you're yeah, but you're like eating ribs and you're sweating. Yeah, that's it? not good. Okay, well, that's a different kind of pressure on your body. I think I think the sweating associated with muscular exercise is very, very good for you. Not ah, just okay. because it's sweating, but yeah. because the state your muscles are in when you sweat. We will uh, take ourselves a little break. Rob Keep Schneider. the boobs. Keep them both. That's right. Rob Schneider's our guest tonight, and we'll be back after this. Hey, hey, hey. Love line, everybody. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Rob Schneider's our guest. Rob is uh, coming out with his uh, newest movie tomorrow. That would be the 1st of June. That would be Friday. It is called The Animal, and it will be at a theater near you. And uh, here comes Rob now. What did I miss? No, nothing. What did I, miss? I was just plugging your movie. Any more big boobs? Well, speaking of big boobs, I was going to mention that uh, next week, Brooke Burke is going to be here God from that wild R E, and I love her so God much. God love her. Do you know her? <laughs> yes. Hot. She is so hot. Yeah, that's crazy. And not fair. I don't get into. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I don't get into too many uh, TV folk. But boy, is she a colossal piece of ass. She is so hot. Do you know her, Drew? Have you seen her? I don't think so. Let's you, bring some pictures in here. Let's put them on the you, wall. You never saw that Wild on Eve. She's the new one to replace Jules Asner. No, 
No. You don't watch any of that. I don't watch it. Rob, do you know who I'm talking about? I've I've seen if it's who I think she, it is on she, E. Does she cross over to the Discovery Channel or anything? Uh, no, the she hot, the History she, Channel. She is she's tan. She almost looks a little Polynesian come, or I, something. I never go to clubs and that stuff's happening. How come that? How can they have those clubs? Where are those clubs? I, I don't, don't think know. they exist. There's a place in Boston. There's shows that one night in Boston. This crazy club with all these hot babes. I've been to Boston. <laughs> I've been to clubs in Boston. I didn't see girls like rubbing each other's boobs. And I know, I know. I don't, I don't know. You know, and the girls didn't look like that either. You know, it looked like more like Miami. And no. they said Boston. You, you know what I love about that uh, Wild On is, you know, they're down at the Caribbean. They're down at the Sandals Resort. All right. And then, then they'll go, you know what? We're going, wi- we're going to Nova Scotia. And you think, well, all right, there's nothing going on there. Sure enough, more thong yeah. backs, more hot tubs. I don't get more it chicks, either. More chicks, more togas. I, I just don't, I don't buy it. I think they create it. They bring their own people. They must. There's they're just not that many good-looking people in the world that you There's can travel not. around. No, exactly. Tom? Yeah. You're 15? I am. What's up? Uh, first, I want to ask Rob, hey, what part of P-Town did you live in? Uh, back in the Valley, Park Pacifica. Yeah. How about you? Cool. Me, I stayed in Sharp Park for a while. Actually, Sharp Park, very cool. Everybody yeah. back there probably knows me. I was homeless. I lived on the golf course. Oh, boy. Who cares? All right, so uh, what's up there, What's Tom? up, man? How did you only 15? How did you end up homeless yeah, back, what's back the story then? Yeah, I got kicked out of my mom's house. For how long? Like a couple of days or what? For like six months. How old were you? How old was I? 15. 14. How did they let you not have a place to live for six months? Well, I stayed in a tent and I had a place to live. What's up with your mom? With my mom. She's an addict? an alcoholic. Yeah, okay. Okay. I, I became the addict. You're an addict. And what? Yeah, well, not anymore, but I, I was on what, crystal What were you doing? Mass. Crystal meth. Oof. That's yeah. a tough one for a while and uh, so then I stopped doing it right because I got locked up actually mm-hmm. and so um, I noticed when I was urinating it would burn right while you were on meth it, well when I was off it when you were off it yeah and so I had a re and all that stuff and they said I was clean and so I was like okay that's weird and then like it went away and it wasn't burning anymore and then, so I did a line a couple of weeks ago probably about a month ago right mm-hmm. and then it was burning again Hmm. But then it, it went away after a week or two. It's probably some bladder spasm that develops from the meth. Are you sucking the line up with your penis? <laughs> no, I've no. only done a line once. Hey, listen, as far as like far doing we... lines, that is the, the, the nastiest, the grossest the drug. And you should, you know, you said you're not an addict, but yet you're 15 and you're still snorting a line occasionally. Oh, man, I'm not doing that no more. It's just... Uh, hey, look. I was about to cut that. Yeah. All right. I put Tom on hold because he said uh, BS uh, twice on the air, and he can't do that. I don't know why, because I sit around and talk about fecal matter and finger banging chicks all night long, but someone says the S word, and they're out of luck. But then what do you do? Hang up? I just put him on hold. No. What Anderson do? Get rid of him? Get rid of him. Yeah. Here's, Here's my language. Here, here's the point. Meth is the worst of all drugs. It, it really is. It, it not only nasty, is it, is it dangerous to drug. you, it's dangerous to everyone that's in true. society because people, people get violent. That's true. On this drug. But it is it is horribly addictive and it causes people to do things that they would never even dream of doing. And they're all violent and they all yeah, involve true. crime. And I couldn't imagine a worse thing to get into. You'd, you'd be better off getting into Santeria at 15 than yeah. you would be getting into meth. And I mean no disrespect to Eric Estrada, but it's a horrible, horrible drug. It really is. And I guess the guy's back home. I guess he cleaned up a little bit. But he still occasionally uh, dabbles. And dabbles is still a problem. Yeah, he needs and, to. And uh, you know what you got to do? You got to get rid of those friends and not hang out with those people that, that are doing it. Because if they're doing it, you're going to eventually do it again. You got to get back in the program. I'm sure you've, you've done, a, I hope you've done a little work in the program and you got to get back to it. Sonia? Sonia? Caller goes by the name of Sonia. 18 from San Jose. Hello. Hello. There you go. Hi, Sonia. Hi. What's up? Nothing. What's up, San Jose? Nothing. What's up? Yeah, go ahead. You're on the air. Oh, really? (laughs) Are you high? No. All right. Well, ask your question then. (laughs) Okay, well, I have never had an orgasm. And you're 18? Huh? And you're 18? Yeah. You've never had one by yourself? Period. Period. Never had one. Okay. Uh, Not uncommon by 18, by the way. Yeah. That's not, not too weird. You have a boyfriend? Sounds like... Mm-hmm. Three and a half years. Ooh. Riff. He's, He's not very good, is he? 
Well, I don't know. Like, it's weird. We we do it um, a lot. Like, I don't think we do it a lot, you know, but we do it maybe like a few times a week. And he does it for like a really short amount of time. Like, it's, it's really short. Like, like really short less than like 10 minutes or 5 minutes even yeah. and like and then he's tired and he can't it's just it's just weak it's right. not tired it's not tired now. He, he has some kind of refractory phase where he can't do it uh, his, his biology will not allow him to operate for about 30 minutes I or hope so. to Christ he's not listening to this show I really do kill himself no, he's sleeping he's sleeping well sure he's tired sure right <laughs> well uh, you gotta get to know your body a little bit better I would suggest uh, some chronic masturbating yourself yeah yoga get to know yourself do uh, you know? Make yourself have a few orgasms and just yeah. let let him watch you. And I don't think you're into this guy. No, I totally am. I totally uh, am. Really? So you're Why? Bones. Really? Because <laughs> he doesn't sound like a winner. He's asleep. No, he is. He hasn't given you an orgasm in three like and a half you years. Feel as though he's a winner. You do, you just speak rather disparagingly of him. You've been with no. him since you're fifteen, and so often people your age stay in relationships that should have ended after three weeks for four years. <laughs> Right. Uh, and when you're 25 and you get involved with this same guy again, the relationship will last a few days and you'll realize it's not going anywhere. You know, it's funny. At 15, you stay no, in a... Rela- it- Hold on a second. At, at 15, you stay in a relationship that should have lasted five weeks for five years. Yeah. And then when you're 35, you stay in a relationship that should have lasted yeah. five years for five weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That yeah. is sick. Yeah. Rob, Rob wearing puka shells, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. uh, I, I think we uh, we uh, struck. They're it. coming back hard, man. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's difficult for me. Yeah. I wore them when I was eleven. Sonia. Yeah. All right. So uh, it's going to well, be. I, I agree with Rob. It's going to be hard for you to have an orgasm with him until you sort of figure yourself out. Wait, but why can't he? Like, why can't? Well, you got to do it first. You help him. Why show him. Why can't he? Like. What? Why can't he give you one? Yeah. Because you have to know how he what he needs to do in order to give you one. You, you got you got to make guys yourself don't magically know that. Take your get some time, get feeling frisky, maybe take yeah. a hot bath, light a candle or two, mm-hmm. paint your toenails and you know, <laughs> enjoy. Well, you've been faking it for him though, haven't you? No, I haven't. I swear, N- I never haven't. once. Do you ever look at him disappointed and go, "That's it?" No, I don't do that. All right, let's well, no, start. He, Try really, start doing he's really, that. He's really insecure about it. Right. He, he should be. He's, he's terrible. No, but like I, I don't know. Like, it's good, you know? It's just like it's short. Okay. All right, all right. No, you you got to not... give yourself on your own orgasm. Okay. Crying Hold on. Out. We have to talk about you behind your back. Hold on a second. First off, it's yeah. funny because she's angry at him. Yeah. Okay. Because she it, won't it, it peeks though. through every once in a while. Yeah, like yeah. You go, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. But? But it sucks. But it's great. But it's it short. lasts a real short time. But I love him. But it's great. But he's tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ambivalent. All over right. the place. Right. Now... If you ask her what's up with the sex, she says it's bad. But if you say maybe you should break up, then it turns into great, and then he's a great guy. But meanwhile, you can hear every once in a while a little spike escape, which is she's angry as a guy. She's angry. bored. She's bored. Yeah. Right. This isn't what she thinks. It you got to get. You know what? I think you're going to have an orgasm uh, oh, if you get out of this relationship. Okay. First of all, get out of this relationship. Get a new guy, and you're going to have like uh, an orgasm no, a day. Stop. What? Okay. Stop. First of all. It's not like that. You guys totally overanalyze things. That is just so not like that. Okay, what is it like then? I'm not angry at him. I'm just wondering why. And like that's not the like the only part of a relationship. Like we're so close in every other way. Like okay. you know, we the, could spend denial. Like, does he perform oral sex on you? Uh huh. He does. Mm-hmm. How long? I don't know. Like we will like he's only done it like maybe like four or five times. Yeah. Four or five times in three and a half years. You got a real winner there. Well, please, it's once every ten months. I mean, give him a break. (laughs) Do the math. It's not so bad. (laughs) Okay, I take it back. He's very caring. Why doesn't he do that more? Do you enjoy that? I don't know. I I do, but, I mean, I guess he doesn't like... You know, you got to find out what you like, all right? Sonia, Sonia, Sonia. But listen to Sonia, everybody. She doesn't hear it. Does he perform oral sex? Oh, yeah. Well, how how often? Uh, Four (laughs) times in the last three and a half years. Yeah. Well, do you well, like it? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess he doesn't like to do it. I mean, every time you give a report on this guy's sex, it's it's horrible. His report it's card F. is a D you know, or F every you time. You start going with another guy, and you're going to see a difference. You know, at least in the first few weeks. Well, yeah. Why are you Why no, are you so defensive about this guy? Because he's amazing. In what he's way? Amazing. He has not really demonstrated that so far. Why does there only have to be one way? 
You're, you're the one who called with complaints. You haven't told us one thing yet that, that shows us that he's amazing. What is? Give us What's something. What's amazing? Else. Does he sleep amazing? Yeah. He's yeah. In a really cute fetal position. It's the way he drools and rolls over. He is just yeah. amazing. How he never makes me have an orgasm. It's incredible oh, well. how he goes down on me every S other year. <laughs> yeah. How is he amazing? Well, I was 15 years old. I mean, we didn't do anything. Totally How is he amazing? Long. He just is. Oh, okay. No, oh, you know right. what? Stay right. in it. You All sound right. like you're very happy. I no. hope everything works out. You for you, you, let me let me tell you what else is going. on You can on club here. him with a baseball she bat. She lost her virginity to him, She's and a lot him. of women think they need to really make a go at the guy they lost their virginity to. And he's he's basically over the relationship. I who, think he knows. Over. We don't. We don't know anything about him. We have no sense of who that kid is. I think he's over it. I don't know how old he is. How old is he? I see him as a forty. Just Rip Van Winkle, just a huge beard <laughs> and uh, propped up against the side of an apple tree, asleep all day. Amazing. He, he does kind of lingers. He is amazing. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of lingers for up to thirty seconds. Sure. That's right. I'm the sleeping. I'm going back to bed. He's I'm amazing. very tired. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And uh, a guy who goes down on her every six months, stupendous. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. yeah. Amy? Yeah? You're 13. <clears throat> yeah. What's up? Well, um, every guy I've ever dated, like, throughout I mean, this, like, past couple of years, whenever I start getting interesting guys. Past couple of years? You mean when you were 11? Yeah. All right, what? Follow me. All right, go ahead. They, right. like, call me every day, constantly talk to me. My best friend's boyfriend, who I went out with, Last year still hits on me. Jeez, this is the I got a big deal. And I don't like it. This is the girls version yeah. of that? All right, yeah. you're hot. Big uh, deal. All right. No, I'm not. You're not. No. M why? You're not good looking. Well, I don't think I am. Well, I know, but that's but something like, that good-looking people say, so people we tolerate them. <laughs> lots lots people, all right. Lots of people tell you what. Have a problem. Lots of people tell you what. Lots of people tell me I'm not. Oh, they do. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good. This way of why, why are all these guys chasing you around then? I do not know. What, that's do you what ask them? Do you ask them? Uh, yeah, but they don't give me an answer. Why not? Okay. They say that you're my friend. Okay. Do you oh, have nice. a boyfriend right now? Yes, I do. And how's that going? Mm, fine. He's sweet. That's Gives sweet. me lots of gifts. How old is Whoa, he? Oh, wait a minute here. This is this is a yeah. yeah. I see a guy with like an Italian horn medallion and a pinky ring. I'm gonna up buy yourself in something tonight, darling. No, he's oh. not. How old is he? He's my age. Did you hear that? That that she's a little angry too. Oh. Yeah. What's up, Whoa, Amy? Oh, Amy. Where's Daddy? Um, which one? Oh, there we go. The one you hate the least. <laughs> the one I hate the least. Um, he's. Um, I think he's asleep right now. And how about the one you hate the most? Where is he? Um, Idaho. What did he do to you? Um, he just was not a very good father. What did he do? He was abusive and he yelled a lot and they fought a lot when I was young. Do you, right. do you figure all men are like that? No. How, how's your stepdad doing? Oh, he's he's great. He's been my dad since I was like six. Mm -hmm. And he's he's like my best friend. That's great. All right. But Does he follow you around a lot? Him, no. And real dad, biological dad, do you have any contact with him? Um, the last time I talked to him was two months, no, three months ago when I asked him to call me back as soon as he had a chance. Mm -hmm. And that was three months ago? Yeah. Well, okay. maybe he's uh, still fixing that tranny on the car he's working on or something. Yeah. So you're, okay, so, him. Amy. Hmm. All here, guys are not your dad. Here's the deal. Uh, you got energy. And you're 13. Don't don't be in such a rush to grow up. Well, not also. And and, 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 and yes, this go is ahead, this Greg. is this is hatred. Just, you could feel it when you started talking. I know. About I me. I've said this a thousand times on this show, Rob. Mm. Guys aren't affected that greatly by their parents, but by their mom, by their mom. Yeah. But their but your your daughter, you can screw her up for the rest of your life if you just work on her for a very short period of time mm -hmm. between the age of two and six yeah. you can ruin her life and every man she's with from that point on yeah and this uh young vanessa here 13 years old and man men stand for everything but what they should stand for in her life mm -hmm. and she's got a ton of energy well, and maybe, then you maybe this relationship with her stepfather could be help heal some of that sounds he, like he, she's, he, she she does possibly, love a man so possibly maybe. but i think he's just he's just a uh, he's like a pet he's a friend he's yeah. okay 
Hey, She's Vanessa. Not a real dad figure. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you just kind of take it slow with guys and keep your eyes open and think about how they make you feel and why, where those feelings are coming from, and maybe that some of those feelings are feelings that your dad may have left behind. Um, no, that's not me. That's the other girl. Oh, wait a minute. Who are we just talking to? Oh, we're talking to Amy. I got too many thirteen-year-olds on this show. Sound like hey, Amy. Yeah. Can you do what I just told that other girl to do? <laughs> yeah. All right. I have another question. Okay, here it comes. Um, uh, I, I when I was younger I had scoliosis, mm -hmm. and um, every woman in my family is basically pretty big, busted wise, yeah. and I'm a double D forty. There you go. Hence the following. Thirteen. Hence the following yeah. around, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah um, hence the boys following her around. Yeah. Yeah. Hence the, the appropriate hatred for men. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Anyway, and I was wondering if maybe, like, when I'm a little older, if my back pain continues, should I get a reduction? Wait a minute. You're way too young to be going down But, it, it, but it's it's a reasonable question. And when you're older, if, yes, you are having a lot of back, you know, deep bra strap grooves, neck, shoulder pains. I, I like Rob's idea that you exercise and physical yoga. therapy and yoga. But if all that fails, then certainly that is a 13, that is a clear indication for breast reduction. I would not recommend weights. I would recommend aerobics. I think if uh, how much do you weigh? I weigh one hundred and thirty-eight. Now, how tall are you? I am five seven and a half. Okay, well you're pretty normal, but I think that you could drop. Wait, what's the bra size again? <laughs> Double D forty. Okay. Okay. I think you I'm could, not going to feel good about myself when I get home. But I, you could lose a few pounds. Uh, you know, exercising. You are not an abnormal weight. But I think you could exercise. I think you could do some yoga. I don't think weights. You know, you, she sounds like she's normal. I, you know, yeah, yeah. We've got exercise. to take a break. I, I have a lot of thoughts that I have to share with you um, after this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. And that is uh, Rob Schneider in the background there. The movie, The Animal, coming out tomorrow, everybody. And you, uh, I suggest that uh, you all go out and see it. Rob's a friend of the show, and we always support our friends. Thank you. Let's uh, hop back to the phones and speak to uh, Tiffany, who's 19. Tiffany? Hi. Hey. Um, my question is, is, okay, I'm 19, and I've been out of high school for a year, and... I've been single ever since I've gotten out of high school, and I cannot find any guy that's, like, even worth dating. Are you no. working? Yeah, I'm working and going to school. Where do you work? Um, I work in a hospital. I'm not going to say where. What I'm, kind of work do you do? I'm a pharmacy technician. Mm, cool. Yeah? yeah any any guys you work with? <laughs> no, they're they're too old for me because I'm kind of young to be a pharmacy technician. Oh, there you go. Well, you know what? There's... Uh, do you have any social activities that would put you in a position where there's some desirable guys? Maybe um, school? School's probably the only one. The problem is, is like, I kind of, I've been dating, like, old friends from high school and stuff, and mm. a lot of them are a bunch of druggies, and because of my job, I don't want to be around that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good idea to not be around What that. kind of school are you going to now? Where are you going to school? Um, I go to community college. I'm trying to transfer to university. But Which one? San Francisco, I mean, San Jose State. I could, I'm trying to go to U of A, because they offer a pharmacy program uh, It seems like that's what you need to get going on, because yeah, U of A is a huge school. You'll meet a lot of people there. It'll be, it'll be a wholly different life for you. What year of the uh, pharmacy program do they start teaching you that funky language with the accent where you can't Latin. understand people? No, <laughs> not Latin. It's uh, what I like to call Johnny Quest villain nationality. <laughs> can't quite put your finger on it. You know, it's not one of the good ones. <laughs> and you're trying to, f you just have difficulty understanding the pharmacist. Is that is that in year three? I'm not sure. When do they start training? Yeah, they with perfect that, that in the clinical years. I, I see. Never went to pharmacy school. You got lying. Yeah. yeah, I got lucky. I yeah. got you get in line, round eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, hey, right, hey, Tiffany. I could not help you. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is, you sound delightful. I don't. I yeah, don't know. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be. There's those guys out there. You just. The you're also being picky really right now, aren't you? Though, what? What? Is that like I have a problem because like I, I started having sex at a young age, and like whoever I date now, it always seems like it has to become into like a sexual relationship. That's because that's where the guys wanted to go. And it's I up don't to the girl to, to stop and lead the relationship. Yeah, <laughs> you have you have the, all the power. Yeah, you don't understand. Don't this. give but it up. Is, yeah, you got the power. You hold the cards. It's up to you. <laughs> well, how old were you when you started having sex? Twelve. Oh, mm -hmm. ouch! With a relative or? I was raped when I was twelve, and mm -hmm. my self-esteem okay. went like way down, and okay. I just let anything happen. Who did that to you? Um, it was an older guy. Right. I I was just it was at a friend's house. We had a party. A bunch of guys Ugh. came over. Yeah. You were never sexually abused or touched or anything like that beforehand? No. Okay. 
All right. Did you ever prosecute the guy? My parents didn't believe me. Oh. Uh, mm. There's some issues then with your parents. Yeah, let's how just think. How does that work? Yeah, how by did, the way, when your child comes up and said I was raped, in what in what planet the parents go, "Hey, you're lying," as opposed to going, "Oh my God, let's go get our exam, let's find out, get this guy." I mean, that's abuse. It's yeah, it's bizarre. So your parents already had some stuff going on here. That, that may have been why you were victimized. Yeah. Now, do you, how's your relationship with your parents now? Do you have any contact with them? Oh yeah, I live with them, but it's hard at times. I um. Actually, me and my sister got in a big fight a month ago, and I got sent to jail because of it, and my parents didn't even, like, come and get me or anything. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking you got to get out and get a student loan. You got good yeah. grades? <laughs> They're okay. Listen, here's... Uh, seriously. What's your name? Tiffany. Tiffany? Tiffany? Get out of that. Really? You sound like a pretty together girl, yeah. honestly. I you try to be. Her. And don't, don't get into any alternative means of making money to no, pay yeah, for school. Listen, because she got listen, the name, you know. you yeah, got... The stripper name. You Yeah. You, the no sex kind of thing. I think you got to get, um, you know, get out of that unhealthy home and get into school because you like school, right? Yeah, she does. Well, then, great. Keep the whole school thing going and, uh, you know, get a student loan, get yeah, a good I job. Agree. Where it's a positive, uh, you know, not a stripper thing, a good job, and then uh, you'll meet guys, and you, you sound like you're going to be fine, but yep. get out of that home. Yep. And and ultimately, her revenge will come later in life when one of her parents gets cancer, and she refuses to believe the parent. That she <laughs> yeah. denies him that. That's exactly. What that's, that's what I'm brilliant. going to do with my fucks. We'll be back. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it with the show, everyone. I want to uh, thank a few people before we uh, sign off. First, uh, phone screener Tara. Don't call me Tara who did a wonderful job all week. Damien, who uh, uh, does a wonderful job on the phones as well. Engineer Anderson for sliding those potentiometers and dropping in those uh, drops. He's very good. He, oh, yes, he is, he's also uh, needs to put on your mic. Here we he, go. He's a magician, we except go. for the part about turning on the guest goddamn mic. No, he's, that's his way of critiquing my... Uh, I'm trying evening. to do my best here under really difficult circumstances. <laughs> Producer Ann for putting her feminine stink on the show and, uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, booking big time guys like uh, Rob Schneider, whose movie comes out tomorrow, tomorrow Friday, Friday yeah. everyone, yeah. June 1st. I'll know my future by this time tomorrow night. Wow. The, the Animal. Everyone go out and see yeah. it. And uh, Rob, thanks a lot. Hey, Adam, uh, that one caller was right. You're, you're a genius. I enjoy you. Thank you. You make me laugh every time. Thank you very Dr. much. Dr. Drew, uh, you scare me because everything you say is right. <laughs> so until next time, Sam Crover, Dr. Drew saying mahalo. You get in line, round eye. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.